Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Josh Discoding. In today's tutorial, we're going to be setting up an enemy spawner. Now, I've done a tutorial on this in the past. I saw a bunch of comments asking how to make more advanced spawners, whether it's spawning them at a random location around the actor, spawning them in groups, spawning variants of different types of actors. We're going to cover that all in this mini enemy spawner tutorial series. So during the series, I am going to be following best coding practices, which will include naming conventions, optimization, etc. As well as I'm actually going to be trying to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it, as opposed to just getting this tutorial through quickly. Um, I'm going to actually try and teach you in a way that you can understand and go and do it on your own. So with that said, the first thing we're going to do is open up this third person uh, example templates. Of course, if you already have a project, you can use your existing project. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder in our content browser here, and I'm just going to call it enemy. Then we're going to open up the folder by double clicking it. We're going to right click in our content browser here, select blueprint class, and we're going to select a character. The reason we're selecting a character is later down the line, we're going to want this AI to be able to walk around. So all blueprints in Unreal should start with the name BP underscore and then your name. So we're going to say BP underscore basic enemy. For now, we don't actually need our enemy to do anything, but we do want to see our enemy when it spawns into the world. So in our components tab over here, we're going to select our mesh. And then in our details panel, we're going to select the skeletal mesh. We can come down here and select any mesh you would like. I'll go with Manny. And I'll just drag him down so he's in the collision box. Now for this mesh in particular, you can see it spawned in sideways. This blue arrow represents forward. So we're going to go ahead and select and rotate objects right up here at the top of your viewport. And we're going to rotate it negative 90 degrees so that it's facing forward. Now that's all we gotta do with the enemy. So we can go ahead and compile and save this. Now we'll create the spawner itself. So back in your content browser, we're again gonna right click and select blueprint class. This time we're just gonna select an actor. Again, we'll start with BP underscore and we'll call it enemy spawner. All right, so we can come over to the event graph. Now in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to do this. We used event tick, but that's not a very optimized way of doing it. So this time we are going to delete event tick and begin overlap, and we're going to use timers instead. So you can right click and search for timer, and you'll see a bunch of options. So in blueprints, you have a couple of choices um, on how to use timers. The two main ones being set timer by event, and set timer by function name. We're going to use set timer by event because I haven't covered functions um, on my channel and I don't want to be using something that I haven't explained yet. I feel like that could be its own video uh, on the proper times to use functions versus events. For now, we'll just use set timer by event. So, three main things you'll see here is the event. This is what's going to get called when the timer is fired. This is the time. This is how long until this event gets fired. And looping is if this is going to happen once, or is it going to happen every, say, two seconds. So the first thing we want to do is grab this event, drag out, and we can just add custom event. We're going to call this event spawn enemy. Now, we're going to say we want this event to happen every five seconds. So we'll put five seconds into the time. If you want it to be two seconds, you'll put two here. If you want it to be 10, you'll put 10 here. Now, I don't want to just spawn one enemy and then that's it. I want to spawn an enemy every five seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and say that it is looping. So we now have our timer set up. On event begin play, we're going to start this timer, which will spawn in an enemy every five seconds. 
So now we actually have to spawn in our AI. So to do that, we will drag out from spawn enemy and we'll say spawn AI from class. Now make sure you select spawn AI from class and not spawn actor from class. If you select spawn actor from class, it will never be able to move. It will always be stuck in one place. So in our spawn AI from class, we have a few options. We have our pawn class. So this is going to be the actor that we're spawning in. In this case, we want it to be our BP underscore basic enemy. Now, a behavior tree is essentially AI logic. It's used to determine what the AI should be doing, when it should be doing it. We have not covered this yet, so for now, we're going to leave this empty. If you have your own behavior tree, feel free to put it in. The last thing we need to do to actually get this AI spawning right now is pass it a location and a rotation. Now, both of these are optional. For example, we don't have to set a rotation. Maybe we want it to spawn in with the rotation we gave here. However, we don't want to be spawning it in at 0, 0, 0. We want to be spawning it in at the location of the spawner. So to do this, you can just call get, get actor location. And this will return the world location of this enemy spawner. You can drag that into the location here. And then we can compile and save, and we have a very basic enemy spawner. So again, just to recap, on event begin play, we call set timer by event. This timer calls spawn enemy every five seconds while looping. And then we spawn an AI from class at the location of this actor. So now, if we drag our enemy spawner into the world, and we simulate, you'll see after five seconds, an enemy will spawn in. Then if we wait another five seconds, another enemy will spawn in. And if we wait another five seconds, another enemy will spawn in. So that is the basics of setting up a basic enemy spawner. Like I said, this is going to be a little mini tutorial series. So in the next video, we're going to go over how to get it spawning at a random location around the actor, as opposed to just spawning it at the actor location. If this video did help you guys, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. If you have any suggestions on what you would like to see in the future, be sure to leave a comment down below. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will try my best to respond to any of them. With that said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and good luck with your games.